do another stream with board game with education bge's tabletop i'm gonna check the sound because i always want to double check make sure the sound's going and we're not live the whole time while we're streaming but if you are watching us live you can just let me know the sound's working um it looks good so Today we have Rob and Lori on. I'll introduce them here in just a moment, but we're going to talk about some Kickstarter games. We're going to talk about their game currently on Kickstarter called Earth Rising, um, and we'll play a round of that game. So I'm super excited to have them on. Let's bring on Rob and Lori. Make sure we got the... There we go. Welcome, Rob and Lori. Thank you for joining us Hi. today. <laughs> nice. Cheers. Thanks for having us. As, a, as I was saying, you guys are the first ones as guests on the stream for this kind of uh, daily stream that we're doing. I know we had Lori on on Friday, so if you haven't checked out that interview, it is on any podcasting platform. Lori talks about the game Earth Rising and using it in the classroom or for games for learning and shares a bit about that aspect of the game. But today we're going to talk about the board game hobby in general. Before we get there, can you guys introduce yourselves to our community out there? Okay, sure. Lord. Sure. Okay. So I'm Laurie Blake. I'm an autistic board game designer um, and the CEO of Strop Drop and Roll, the company behind Earth Rising. Um, this is our second game, and we're currently blown away by the reception that it's had. We just hit 200% today. So, way. Um, but yeah, uh, Rob and I have uh, been working our butts off on this, and and we're we're very pleased to be here. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, and I'm Rob Ingle, and so I'm the art director of Stop Drop and Roll, and I make all the pretty pictures. I take uh, Laurie's brain stew and turn it into sort of nice visuals. <laughs> it makes it pretty. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of symbiotic. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> awesome. Very much so. Yeah, and congratulations on hitting your funding goal and also like doubling it. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, re re really good. It went it went a lot better than we could have hoped for, didn't it? In, the, in, the, in those first five days, it went mad, yeah. Really <laughs> yes. So thank you to everyone. If anyone's watching yeah. who has backed us already, thank you for helping us get here. It's been awesome. Awesome. And we have Reed watching. Reed, thank you for joining and checking on out the stream today. Um, I think and she's part of your team, well. right? Yeah, she she did some bits and pieces. You know. What she's saying is she, is she telling us off? She's basically the boss. So yeah, re re tells us what to do to actually you know mean that we actually get work done. Whereas you know <laughs> I'm very much a you know uh, one of those very focused creatives, and Rob is also a very focused creative, and so we get very much focused on exactly what we're doing right now. And re comes along and goes. What are you doing? That's not ready for next week. We 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 need this other good. thing that you haven't done anything on yet. Um, and then we we all scurry about in our different directions. So yeah, is that free? Is there herd, herding cats? We're the cats. <laughs> we are the cats. I mean, <laughs> that's awesome. You guys have some good puzzle pieces together working on the project. So that's really cool. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So we are going to talk about Kickstarter, and that's our segment for today. Before we go into talking more about. Earth Rising. Um, I'm going to pull up Kickstarter here. Uh, this is the first time I've done this stream with guests on Zoom, so I'm going to make sure I can do this sharing well and do it right. So I'm going to share my screen there, make sure we're all on, and we got the Kickstarter up. And it'll make us a little bit bigger. All right, so let's go over to the Kick It with Kickstarter. All right. I think we should be good. That screen kick it with Kickstarter should be up. And so Kickstarter, I know you guys are very familiar with Kickstarter because you have your game on there. I'm sure maybe was your first game on Kickstarter as well? It was indeed, yes. So that was Pugs and Mugs. And hmm. how did you learn about the platform before that game? Or like, yeah, what what is your initial experience with Kickstarter and then your experience with the game? Rob, did you have much experience with Kickstarter before no. us? No, I didn't all. really. I took a lot of I, I took a lot of cues from you, and then it, there was a lot of trial and error, wasn't there? But um, there was so uh, much. I mean, I suppose from our first, <laughs> we we learned quite a harsh lesson, really, that, that first time round. But you know, we can, we cancelled after what a week or whatever, and it learned a lot of lessons. You learn very quickly, um, yeah. and get a lot of feedback, and uh, yeah, second time round, nailed it. So um, 
and Definitely. similar things happen with with earth rising so we're at each time we're refining our method so i think <laughs> next one will be well, yeah first time around 300 percent right. Mm. Yeah, yeah. let's hope so. <laughs> uh, one thing we we I mean, the only real way in which we were able to make our our games as successful as they were were because of the backers that very passionately went. This is a great game, but honestly, guys, you got to sell it better. Um, and uh, as a result, taught us the lessons we needed to learn in order to uh, you know reach those wider audience. That means that we are here today with our two hundred percent. So. Yeah, it is down to those packers who, mm. you know, step forward and go, "Hey, this is great, and we want to help you get there." So. Yeah, we built up a great community, haven't we? And over, over, we started it with with our first game, and then during this this campaign, it's just grown and grown, and we've we've had so many great people. We've we've even got a few super fans, I think. You know, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, that's awesome, and endlessly helpful. Yeah, it's good. That's really cool. Um, and David, thank you for joining. That's all right. You can always check out. He mentioned he has to. He's working from home, so he just has his stream on mute. But the stream will be available on YouTube to watch the replay. Um, yeah, and I want to kind of back up because I ran a Kickstarter too, but I canceled it. And we won't get into that. That's something I've shared with my community before. Um, and it was for a game for the classroom. Um, when I did that, I had to learn a lot. But even before that, I knew what the platform was as like a, I guess a consumer of Kickstarter, if if you would call it that. Were you guys mm -hmm. backing games or like exploring the platform before you jumped into creating, or was the Kickstarter the means to an end as far as like you got this game and you found Kickstarter, it helps you get the game out there and published? I think as a company, it was very much a means to an end. But for me personally, and well, not only had I backed games before, but I have quite a few friends who also are very much in the tabletop world. And so as a result, I'd seen them backing lots of different games as well. So I'd, I'd had both personal experience and the experience of other people who could give me their input as well. Yeah, my, my experience, I'd, I'd heard the term crowdfunding mm. and that, that was as far as my experience went. So <laughs> it was a really kind of steep, steep learning curve, but a good, but a good one, you know, it was really, um, I learned quickly that, 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 that there's so much community and enthusiasm and the help that rivals give each other, you know, yeah. one yeah. person's making a game, another person's making a game. They help each other. There's no sort of competitive. I suppose there is a little bit of competitiveness, but but there's not a lot of help. It's a great, Absolutely. It's a really nice industry, you know. It is. We're all just passionate people making things we love, which is just such a great thing to be a part of. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, and I guess my experience is similar to Rob's where I had heard the term crowdfunding but always had thought it's like this tech thing. Like you do it in uh, the Silicon Valley. You get people together, angel investors, to fund a startup that's like, uh, I don't know, Facebook or something. Um, but then I stumbled on Kickstarter because I got into the board game hobby and I'm like, oh my gosh, these are a lot of cool games people are sharing in Facebook groups. Oh, I got to back it on Kickstarter? What does that even mean? Um <laughs> And then I realized you back it and you wait a little bit because you're part of like the process of the beginnings of the game, which is really cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so you realize you realize how many talented people there are out in the world, you know, doing doing stuff. And uh, part of it is, is a little bit sobering. You think, oh, you know, I'm not so special after all, but it also <laughs> <and refreshing>. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's just nice, isn't it? You know, it's it's great to see stuff come to life. Yeah, there's a lot Definitely. of a lot of awesome stuff. Well, let's let's go over to Kickstarter because um, I got the main screen popped up. I never, I've never backed a project that is not a game, so I don't have a lot of experience with Kickstarter as a platform outside of the tabletop gaming. So usually when I go on here, I click on games and go to. Um, it depends on like what I'm doing. So maybe I'll just. Uh, or how do I explore games? There we go. I'll look at, this is sorted by Magic, which just kind of tells me what games the platform thinks I would enjoy. Sometimes I just browse through here. Um, but a lot of times when I'm going on here, like routinely, I will browse it by newest. Um, when we had our newsletter, we would feature one Kickstarter a week, and I would try to find Kickstarters that were not funded yet, that were smaller projects to kind of share uh, with our community is something that's cool worth checking out. Um, so I'm going to kind of look through here and choose one to highlight. Um, so we got, I don't know if anything stands out to you guys, we can click on it too. 
I'm going to ask you to sh to search for one. We'll find one of your favorites on the platform now, but Okay. Here's a uh, Chess Wild Animals. So if any chess fans out mm -hmm. there, that's pretty cool. That looks cute. Oh, yeah, let's do this one because I know the um um Mike who's been on the podcast had a game in the medical field about prescriptions so pharmaceuticals and choosing the correct pharmaceuticals to treat different illnesses and he had suggested this on twitter so uh, this is a perfect opportunity to kind of share what this is i'm not i haven't checked it out outside hmm. of just checking checking out the one time he shared it on twitter so it's work together to save lives in the intensive care unit critical care is one to four players work together to cure and discharge every patient from the intensive care unit before the week comes to an end that's cool I wonder if it looks like it was designed as games for learning or a hobby game. It's kind of hard to tell, but... Yeah, it doesn't seem to push itself in one direction or the other necessarily. But uh, it looks it looks pretty versatile. There's quite a bit, a few bits to it. Yeah, it's and, and the card, the design layout, really looks like kind of a push for a video game style, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. It says it's based, yeah, based on real... Okay. Real hospital medicine. So oh, it's obviously got awesome. a sli slightly sort of educational yeah. aspect to it. It's kind of a little blurry, but at least we can zoom in. Therapy dog, a cardiologist, um, influenza, pneumonia. I can't tell what the other one is. Oh, seizure, bron bron bronchoscopy. <laughs> I can't pronounce medical terms. Bronchoscopy. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that's cool. Uh, Bruce is checking out the stream. Bruce, thank you for coming in. Happy Wednesday. Um, and they have oh, donated a copy of Critical Care to the library or school of your choice. That's always awesome. Um, it kind of tells you how to play. I'm not going to go over that now. But, yeah, so that's a cool one. How about you guys? Do you have one that we can check out to you? Well, I had a couple, actually. One yeah. I saw, um, there's one called... Uh, Shasan Azadi, you oh. actually went past it on on the first. Um, uh, if you go back to games, and it is, uh, it's, uh, it's good. There we are. Yeah, actually, mm. had a chance to meet Gorgeous. the designer in Pax Unplugged for this one, but then they're doing another one. Do you want to talk about this one? Yeah. I, I, it's just got, this one literally just caught my eye because I love the I love the slightly over the top graphic style that's rich and and sort of ornate and it, it totally caught my eye um I think the game itself is uh is, is a political bent isn't it and um yeah it could, it could be cool but really this one was just about the visuals but um uh, in terms of gameplay there was one, there's one called arcosa which um i think is right up my street it's got vaguely <laughs> rick, rick and morty-esque um visuals oh, cool um, and it's about aliens building bunkers, and it's got tons of bits in it, which I love because because <laughs> not only does it, does it, I mean, look, it fills the table, right? But um, you also get loads of punch boards, and who doesn't love a punch board? <laughs> Big punch board fan is Rob. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and and I always remember that's one of the best things about getting a new game, isn't it? When you open the open the box and it makes that funny sound, and then you get the kind of the new printed smell. <laughs> I remember my my first uh, uh, memory of board gaming was uh, Hero Quest back in 1989, and it I, I was beyond excitement, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that stuff. Yeah, you're making me yeah, want to go back both these now because this one is it. I think these are both. I think you chose two that are like standalone slash expansions, maybe. Uh, oh no! All right, so Arcosa in this case was a relaunch. Relaunch. Whereas oh, okay. uh, Shazen is indeed a, um, uh, I think, a expansion. Okay. Oh, Azad's standalone feature pledge. Okay, yeah. that's with the. Standalone plus the expansion for the feature. That one is cool. Yeah. I, I just think it's gorgeous. It, it, I, I love everything about the visuals on that, oh. the color palette and everything. But um, yeah, and so the, the one that I think I would uh, enjoy playing the most is Arcosa. Um, and it's, yeah, sort of Rick and Morty Final Space-esque. Yeah, mm. it definitely has the Rick and Morty feel. I want to play <laughs> the first couple seconds of this trailer. I don't know if the sound's going to work, but I'm just going to play it. Cause it looks pretty well done. Like 
very professional. No kidding. Wow. Yeah. Wow, cool. that looks, looks really cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to check that out a little bit more. All right, how about you, Lori? You got a couple, one or two? So um, I, I haven't really made much of a secret of it, but um, we're both Rhi and I are really looking forward to Zuli, um, which is a little, um, what is it, just a, a card collection and um, uh, just a short little 15-minute game. Uh, two oh, U's, so okay. if it, it, it's Z-U-U um, and then L-I. Oh, there we go. Cool. There it is. Yeah. Um, a, a buddy of ours is making this and, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's already, uh, I think it's surpassed it 200% leaving us in the dust, but, um, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, no, it, yeah. it's really good fun. And, um, it one of those really quickly as well, didn't it? It, 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 it was great on the first yeah. day. Yeah. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. That looks really cool. Let's say yeah. maybe it says UK only for brick and mortar, but maybe I'll have to reach out to them and see if we can work something out. That's really awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I'm sure that um, I'm sure that once the campaign's over and they've done their print run, I'm sure they'd be uh, potentially interested in sending some stuff over. Yeah, this is definitely. I mean, we like I, I don't know if I shared before, but I know people in our community are aware that um, we've kind of have a family focus of games, and this really fits with our community locally. A lot of a lot of games like this. Mm -hmm. um, Bruce said with the therapy dog, he would be getting paid for therapy dog. Um, so on the critical care <laughs> card. <laughs> awesome. Um, cool. And Zulu, Re said Zulu just unlocked solo play today. Nice. So that's awesome. That must be a stretch Excellent. goal there. Do they have any other stretch goals to get to? Uh, I think I think it's... To be decided, if okay. I recall. Or maybe there's another one. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, there we go. Player. Oh, yeah, there's revealed one hit. Cool. So 3,000. How close are they? Uh, oh, they're, they, if you they pop hit over it, the, so maybe. No, if you pop over the little dollar oh, no. transfer sign, if you go oh, back to the very right. top. That's right. Um, yeah, it should tell you how much it is in pounds. Uh, yeah. 2,500. So not too far off, really. All right, let's hop over to your game, Earth Rising. There we go. Um, so I have I have a couple okay. questions for you guys about your game. Um, so first off, how did you guys come together? I know you said that you work together really well as far as Re, Rob, and Lori. I'm not sure if there's others on your team, but how did you come together as a team to put this project together? Cool. So the other person on our team is my father, Jasper. Um, so it was initially me and Re and uh, Jasper and Rob. And we all came together to uh, put together Pugs and Mugs, which wasn't designed by any of us, but by the mutual friend of myself and Rob, who was the person who sort of put us together, as it were, um, as uh, people who could make this come to reality. And yeah, we worked on that project and it was fantastic. And we were like, right, let's let's make this you know, a long-term kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, Earth Rising had, was a game that came to me during the production of, um, or during the kind of um, development of Pugs and Mugs. Um, and so by the time the Pugs and Mugs Kickstarter had finished and we were starting to get through that, uh, we'd sort of refined that game to the point where we were like, okay, we could actually make this a real thing. You know, we could make this an actual game. Um, and so, yeah, we decided, well, you know what? the climate crisis is now and so Ooh. let's let's not waste any time let's actually just just do it there's no point yeah, in a, um a few kind of planets aligned in a, in a sort of um i, I mean i i just i got put uh, covid right i got put on furlough and suddenly i had some time and was able to dedicate much more time to to, to this stuff than i would have done and by the time um uh it was time to sort of go back to work was in a position that do you know what I, I, my life's going in a different direction i imagine there's an there there must be millions of people across the planet who've had similar situations yeah. where they've they've come out of the end of the, the you know this whole kind of pandemic and gone actually i'm, I'm going off in another direction and that's yeah. that's i want to do something else i want to do something different anyway yeah so so i was just lucky that i had time and um 
and then and then the, the passion and enthusiasm just com- completely eclipsed everything else. So and it was like we could we could we could do this. We can make this work. You know. Yeah. It's- and lo and behold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, that's super awesome. Um, so I want to go to my next question. I forgot what it was. I had a follow up question before that, <laughs> but um, so how has the Kickstarter been so far? As far as like, um, stretch goals, community, playing the game, sharing the game. How's all that gone? I mean, I mean, it's gone phenomenally. I mean, clearly, you know, we're we're just about to unlock our final stretch goal. Um, we've had incredible community engagement with our various streams and playthroughs, and um, the the micro goals as well. In particular, we've just released a new one, so it hasn't got any uh, progress on it just yet. But nonetheless, if you scroll down to it, for every um, five people who help us across social media, uh, we will plant a tree. So. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different ways. A little bit further, Stretch goals, and then just goals. just past the sustainability point. Go. Here we go, the micro goals. So as you can see, these are a whole heap of trees. I think we're up to about 50 now um, that we're going to be planting at the end of our campaign as a thanks to everyone for sharing us and for getting the word out about our game as far mm-hmm. as possible. And we, we would not be able to um, you know, make it as far as we have had it not been for those people sort of helping us out. Yeah. Um, right. and you know, we, with the various reviewers and such that we sent our games to that, that, uh, you know, played our game and, and put out a video. Um, I think, I think all of them have been here talking about, you know, how excited they are to make us, you know, to help us get to the point where they can actually get a real copy, not just the prototype. Um, and I think that also puts a lot of, um, uh, a lot of, faith in a lot of people where they see the people who have reviewed it actually go and back a campaign and be like well i don't just want to take the prototype and walk away i actually want the proper thing let's actually get this for real um you know so it's been it's been great we've had a brilliant balance of folks who are interested in the educational side of it with folks of the who are interested in the board game side of it and one of the things that rob and i have been saying a lot throughout the whole thing is if we could just get the the climate activist folk who are who are angry and driven and want to make things happen and the board game folk who are goal orientated and absolutely you know focused on winning if we could get those two together we will smash this you know <laughs> smash the real life thing because those are two unstoppable groups and that would be brilliant yeah yeah that's super awesome just, uh, oh yeah go ahead yeah, I, I, i've just noticed actually just as a slight aside Literally, it just occurred to me we've ticked over into hours now, so that's slightly a lot. Yeah, but also good. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, it's 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 weird to see like it go from like you know five, four, three, oh, seventy. <laughs> that's awesome. So let's let's play a round of the game because I realize I I thought I had purchased our. Uh, thing to extend our meeting but uh maybe not so we have like seven minutes so we're gonna jump into into a couple rounds of the game and i'm gonna try to check my settings here on zoom see if i can get that figured out while we're playing um so i need to this is screen top gg which i need to click on a seat right do i just close so if you want to jump into let's say infrastructure so um uh yeah, that's the blue one at the very top. And then I will join in the industry one. Um, and it's pretty much that simple to get started. So um, the way Earth Rising works is that you have um, you have four actions per turn. And the first thing you do is you draw two cards. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to take some cards from the deck, pop them in my hand. Um, and then from there, you can decide what actions you want to take. So, for example, this this is a game that's a couple of turns in. So we've purposefully set this up in advance so that you can see it not right at the beginning, but a little bit, a little bit in. Um, so I have an industry card here. This allows me to affect my own sector because I'm the industry player um, with a single uh, with a single card. Whereas if it was any other sector, because it's not my sector, I'd need two of the same type. Um, so yeah, it's space bar, I think to make it embiggenated. So just in case, uh, you want to show it off. So, uh, yeah, so my first action, I'll play that card and I will add the, 
Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, the cooperative social enterprise uh, practice to the board. So I will show you what these. Um, I'll show you what th that means in f as far as the game when we get to it. But that's that's my first action. So I'll discard that card. Um, next up, because I have two culture cards. Even though they're not my sector, I can spend both of them in order to affect the culture sector. So in this case, I will take the top one, I'll use female empowerment, and I'll put that into play. Because I have this one, which would be able to match with a token that's already on the board, I could have instead taken this practice and removed it from the board so that it's not causing environmental damage. Um, however, I'm going to leave it there because if I if I had taken it off, each one of these supports two individual people within a sector. And if I had taken it off, it would have put them into poverty. So I don't want that to happen. So instead I'm going to put one, going to put a uh, sustainable practice into play. So just discard those. Um, in my, uh, so I have an agriculture card. I think Rob, you're playing agriculture. Is that right? No, I'm playing culture. Ah, okay. Uh, there aren't there aren't cards in the culture one. Oh, I think. see. Oh, yeah. I so you may want to swap yourself to jump into the agriculture sector. Um, so as a result, because Rob is playing the agriculture sector and I have an agriculture card, he's going to be able to use that card on its own for one card, as opposed to me that needs two. So I will spend one of my actions to give that to him, so he can use it on his next turn. And then finally, on my last turn. I will, on my last action, sorry, I will go and take four of the black strain counters that are around the board um, and take them off. So I'll take, let's say, two of these and let's say two of these as well. So, yeah, so you take four strain with one action. So I'm I'm doing this as a kind of whistle-stop thing because I'm aware you're relatively short on time, so I hope you don't mind me streaming through it um both literally and figuratively um but um yeah so that's that's the end of my actions um now at the end of every single turn we calculate how much strain our current world our current society is putting onto our world so uh this starts with every th group of three meeple so these little guys in the middle here who are in poverty every single group of three adds one clockwise around the board. So for example, one starting with me and then two, three, four, five. Oh, I'm zoomed way out. So I'm actually missing it a bit, but six. So that's six strain added because we have six groups of three. Um, and then we go around the board and we look at how many, uh, unsustainable practices we have in each sector, how many sustainable ones we have. For every unsustainable one, that's black, um, it adds a strain token to the burdens above it. And for every unsustainable, uh, sorry, uh, for every sustainable practice, that's white, it takes one away. So for example, in the case of industry, which is my sector, which is where we start with, because it was just my turn, we are adding two, because there's two black, but we're taking away two because there's two white. And so as a result, we don't take or add anything at all. Whereas in the next sector, in the agriculture sector, we've got two unsustainable practices and one sustainable, which means we only add one because it's offset by the other sustainable practice. Okay. So, white, white cancels out of black, right? Pretty much. Yep. So uh, from here, we look at each of the sectors and most of these have uh, two uh, unsustainable practices in them. So uh, infrastructure in this case does. And then uh, culture, thankfully, because of my last go, now only adds one. Uh, politics adds two. And uh, energy, due to this sustainable practice, only adds one. So there we go. That is a turn in Earth Rising. It is that quick and that simple. Um, so at the end of each go, we go, we turn it to the next calendar card. It is now 2024. And now it's Rob's turn and he draws two cards. And Rob's playing agriculture, right? Over here, the green. That's right. Okay. And we're good on time now, so. 
Ah, oh, cool. We have at least a couple rounds. Hey. Okay, so Rob has drawn a status quo strikes card. Um, and would you like to explain this, Rob, or would you like me to? No, no, go ahead. I'll just sit here <laughs> being annoyed. <laughs> okay, so the status quo strikes cards are the they are the forces that want the world to remain as it is because they currently benefit from it they're trying to stop us from transforming our world and they want to put things back so the way this works is for every sustainable practice you have uh in the sector that it's linked to you draw a card plus one for the status quo card itself so in this case we've drawn a politics card which is really useful because Thankfully, there aren't any sustainable practices in there. They're quite happy with this sector. So that means they just draw one card and we apply the effects. So um, this, the effect here is ethical fashion or single use clothing. Neither, uh, well, yeah, neither of those are on the board. So as a result, we add it as an unsustainable practice into the culture sector. Okay. So depending on what's drawn, depending on what's on the board, we add or take away things um, based on it being a, a status quo card. And, and so the better the better a sector is doing, uh, the, the worse it hits, right? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you've got six sustainable practices, you, you draw uh, seven cards. Absolutely. So, for example, if we'd drawn an industry status quo strikes card, we would have drawn three cards and applied the effect of each one to the board. So, yeah, the better you're doing, the harder they hit. Rob's absolutely right. So, um, yeah, you now draw an additional card, Rob, because it replaces that one. And then from there, yeah. So I've got six, so I need to discard something. So in this instance, I guess I would discard. Yeah, so Rob's got uh, Rob's got a hand limit of five cards. So looking at it, he needs to discard one of them. I'll get rid of the end of the Although well, I could have given that to... Oh, whatever. She's done. So uh, my first turn, I would um, I'll play my uh, my green, which is the one that was given to me, um, which is this one here. Add that to the board. Nice. Uh, I could play two got two politics. So what have we got there? Are any of those on the board? I'm zoomed way out. Sorry. Uh, no, neither of them are on the board. Okay, so well, whichever, whichever one, whichever comes first. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, that's ecocide law. Uh, that was my second, wasn't it? Um, so I could use my special ability, couldn't I? Yes, absolutely. So. What I might do is... So Rob's uh, special ability is where he's able to place regeneration tokens around the board onto sustainable practices. So when he places it, it will take off two strain instead of just one. And so as a result, oh, have nice. double B effect. Yeah. So each sustainable effect becomes a double, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so I'll... One. So Rob can place uh, one plus an additional one for every sustainable agriculture practice. Oh, so because he's got... Two, he can place three. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. That's all right. Right, which one, please? So I'll stick one there because that'll cancel that out. Uh, also, I'll do the same here, actually. Yeah. And probably there as well. Nice. Um, so I've got one turn left. So it's Dustin's turn next. You might want to give him that, that card there. Oh, that's me. Okay, nice. so uh, strain. So we've got still a six in the middle. Mm -hmm. And here you're adding the strains, right? The Yeah, six of them. Unsustainable. Still got six. That's it. Um, and then we've got, so starting from me, I cancel out, so I'm okay. Uh, it's plus two on infrastructure. Ooh, starting to look a bit sketchy. Uh oh. 
Um, we've got three unsustainable in culture and uh, one plus the token, so that's two select. Okay, into one. So yeah, if it hadn't been for your token, Rob, we would have been adding two, even yeah. though we had a sustainable practice in there. Because I put that token on the sustainable uh, there, that's okay. two, so it cancels these two out. So that's that's nice. that's fine. And same yep. here. Yep. Fine. And this one cancels out because there's two sustainable and two unsustainable. So that's it. Nice. Perfect. Oh, well, that ecologist really really helped us out there. Yeah. It's pretty useful. An so, Dustin. All right, so I draw two cards, right? You do indeed. Just bring them over here. If I flip them, I'm F. Oh, nice. It's the same as. And then I have okay. two actions, right? Uh, four. Four actions. Yeah, so if you flip your character card over, you have a rundown oh, okay. of the actions that you can take. All right, so... I wanted to create a sustainable practice. I need. Oh, I can. I probably want to look at blue to kind of balance out infrastructure, maybe. Yeah, I'm looking at it actually, and it looks like both of yours match the two tokens that you have on the board, um, which wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for the fact that you only can, like, whenever you take one off it lowers the support that your um, that your uh, s sector is able to yeah. uh, give. Uh, so if you disbanded those, those those meeple would go back into poverty, which would... Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That said, you know, sometimes it is necessary for the balance to be struck. So, for example, in this case, you could spend this card, for example, um, and take this off, which will mean that you're not adding two uh, to this. You're only adding one. However, these folk go into poverty, but because they're not three yet, it doesn't add another strain. So you could make the argument that that, for the moment, is a worthy trade-off. But obviously, if you keep doing that, it will keep it will going, getting worse. All right, let's do that. And that's <clears throat> that's one action. Can I? It says another action is clean up for strain from any burdens. Is that worth doing then? That's right. Since I created, yeah, I think strains. that's a, probably a good idea. Looking at your sector in particular, and the strains are where do I take those from? The middle? No, no, it's the black oh, okay. tokens black. from the burdens around here. Okay. Well, should we explain? Should we explain those? Log? If if sure. uh, infrastructure was to get up to fifteen total, um, so you'd have five at the bottom, ten at the top, it they would spill over into uh, the smaller um, uh, sector here. And okay. you get an ecological disaster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bad. No, no bueno. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, and then I have, I still have two more actions, right? Gain another mm -hmm. player. Give another player one of your influence cards. Um, draw an extra influence card, reshuffle the discard pile back into you. Create a sustainable practice. Disband an unsustainable. Probably want to create a sustainable practice over in politics right but you've only got right. um because it's not your sector you need two two red cards oh two red cards there so but what you about... do have two orange cards yeah so if you check those out um it looks like neither of them are on the board, the board already so you could pick either one of them and as a result you could put that into practice oh, okay let's do decentralized networks Okay, so I'll find you the decentralized. There it is. So I'll actually leave that there for you. Grab it and pop it onto the empty circle just on the edge. That's it. Oh. And then drop those in the discard pile. Where is the discard? Just over oh, here. Right there. Got it. there we go. That's it. Was that four? And the other one, or of course, because you, you use both of them oh, to okay. affect a different sector. So. Just quickly drop that for you. There we go. There we go. So you've got one action left. I feel like maybe I'd give you this blue card, right? Yeah, so one thing you could potentially do is, because you know it's my turn next, you could give that blue card to me because I have another one, which yeah. means that next turn I'd be able to use both of them together and affect your sector immediately. 
let's do that. Just as an aside, while you're on that card, were the um, uh, the activists in play? The activists can play um, these tokens, and if that was on there, instead of removing it, you would flip it um, using this card. Yeah, which is really cool. So uh, that's another example of like one of the characters having a that's cool it. special yeah. ability. Each of the characters have their own special power that helps in their own way. Um, so just as Rob's was really powerful, so is my industry one, and so is the culture and politics and everything else. So, um, yeah. So another another one. Uh, your your special ability is actually is is very good as well. However, unfortunately, because you have no sustainable practices, you would only be able to do a very uh, low grade version of it. Mm. So. Uh, were you to have some sustainable practices in play, which I hope to fix next turn, um, you'd be able to make some good use out of it. So, yeah. Awesome. And we got a question from Jasper. Why can't he play the blue card himself? I think we answered it because you need two, right? Two cards to play. So you can play the blue. You could have played it, but if you had used it, it matched your... Oh, um, yeah. It matched this one, and it would have put more people into poverty and made things worse. Mm. So... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the reason. Ah, uh, yeah, because the token is in play. Mm -hmm. Awesome, that's really cool. I like. I I think I mentioned this on the podcast, um, or maybe when we were chatting the status quo cards too, because that's very uh, real world like, <laughs> as far as <laughs> making change and improving things. You have the the status quo that always pushes back. Um, I really love the flip side of the two coins too because a lot of these things are maybe things that people haven't thought about or haven't thought about the inverse of it or how to mm -hmm. maybe um, improve it from the other end. What, what I like about when, when first time I played it was the, um, I mean, the, this scenario here, rather than removing that, it's better, even though it's an unsustainable practice in this context, it's actually better to have it there. It's still supporting people, mm. even though in the long run it's not great. So it's, there's always like, you've got to balance things up. You can't just go, unsustainable, bad, get rid of it. <laughs> well, actually, no, it's not that simple, is it? You know, because that'll, that'll have a knock-on effect. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like you thought about this, Lol. Almost, you know, occasionally a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's like the real world, right? It's not as easy. It's not black and white. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I'm going to bring us back here. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rob and Lori, for showing us that game. And again, excited for your Kickstarter. Hopefully you can uh, have some more backers here, find out about the game, and support you guys before it ends. It ends in just three days. Um, I shared the link in the post, so whether you're on Facebook, it's in the top. YouTube's the bottom. Twitch, I can't put links in Twitch, I don't think, or at least I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, you can check it out and... If anybody wanted to reach out to you guys, how might they do that? Or if you want to share any last words or last thoughts about the Kickstarter. Uh, well, if you would, if you want to get in contact or if you want to come and check out our, you know, what we're doing and, and how we're, we're getting on with it all, then obviously come by our Kickstarter. But we are also SDR games across pretty much every social media platform there is. So, you know, um, Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, uh gosh what else is there um you know discord. discord we've got a discord channel um come come chat with us we would love to hear from you we want to hear your questions we're happy to answer anything you are curious about um and also you know you can join our mailing list and see how earth rising develops um even if you're not a backer so um yeah come come chat we we are lovely people and we are more than happy to get to know folks well said Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I would say too, echoing the Kickstarter, what we all talked about today, there's a comment section of the Kickstarter where a lot of community happens um, and a lot of um, ways to engage with creators on the platform too, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh, that's another thing. Uh, we've been posting a dev blog every two days for the duration of the entire Kickstarter. Uh, it goes very much into why the parts of Earth Rising are what they are. Um, and it's not limited to backers. You can literally just come and read it. 
Um, so come check that out as well, because it's got loads of really deep insights into how Earth Rising matches up with the real world. Also, you should mention the um, on that note the the booklet that will be coming with the game. Um, yeah, that's right. Lots of real world info. And, and yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So we've got an informational booklet uh, that comes with every copy of the game. It's not an add on or anything, um, which basically goes through every single practice, both sustainable or unsustainable, why yeah. they are that way, um, and also has some stuff to do with like what you can do on an individual scale to make a difference. Um, so yeah, it's very much one of those things where you can play the game and come away feeling like you've played a game, but at the same time, there's all these extra parts to it that mean that. When you do walk away, you're like, oh, I've learned all these things. Amazing. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, definitely definitely following. Uh, I'm, we had you on the show on Friday, the tagline for your company, Improving the World Through Games. That's definitely a practical approach, providing that pamphlet and sharing with backers and people who pick up the game how they can make a difference on an individual level, too. Um, Jasper also said another full game stream on Friday, right? So if you want to give a shout out to where you're streaming that on Friday. Uh, yeah, we'll be streaming that on our, uh, I assume via YouTube and Facebook. Uh, so we'll be providing links and all that sort of stuff in an update. Um, but otherwise, yeah, um, come by our YouTube channel, come by our Discord channel, anywhere where we are, we will be sharing that. So yeah, you'll be able to find us there. Perfect. So thank you again, Rob and Lori, and uh, good luck with the last three days of the Kickstarter. Thank you. And, uh, hours. Scary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thank you also, Dustin, for being one of our backers. Um, yeah. It's yeah. really appreciative to have you not only show your support through that, but also show your through support through, you know, having us on your show. Yeah. Awesome. I'm yeah. excited. I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you.